what's going on guys it's omni York, and today i'm bringing you a brand new video where i'm going to be giving you my in-depth review of the mobile strategy game rise of kingdoms now i'm making this video for those of you who have seen the ads for rise of kingdoms i know a lot of people that i know on the internet friends of mine say that hey omni Arc, your videos and your twitch channel have caused me to start to see more ads about the game rise of kingdoms i know that the military war strategy genre is very saturated in the mobile department there's tons of games that are follow a similar uh, type of structure but i do think that rise of kingdoms is very unique and and I wanted to make an in-depth review of it so that way you guys know if this game is something that is worth playing, worth trying out, and worth downloading. So this review is going to cover six different aspects of the game. It's broken up into six parts, and each part is going to get a grade out of five, and then there will be an overall score at the end of the video. The first category that we're going to be rating this uh, game on is single player content. So how much content can you do as a solo player? Next, we're going to talk about multiplayer content so the amount of content available if you are willing to play in multiplayer uh, scenarios we're then going to talk about the enjoyability and replayability of this game so how likely are you to come back every day and play the game and how much enjoyment are you going to have while playing it next we're going to talk about dev support so the frequency that the devs are updating the game how often they're fixing bugs how often are they adding new content then we're going to talk about the performance so how much lag is there is it crashing a lot um, how, what devices does it work well on things like that finally we're going to talk about the monetization strategy I think this is a big one for mobile games so we're going to talk about you know how um, how aggressive is their monetization strategy how much advantage do you have for as uh, somebody who spends money versus a free to play player because of course this game is free to download and before we jump in I obviously want to make a full disclaimer um, I've played this game for let's see 603 days so that's consecutively um, but I am not a sponsored creator as much as I would love to be um, I'm not a sponsored creator so I'm gonna be fully honest in this video it won't affect my bank account at all I do think that that is worth mentioning though because clearly somebody who plays the game 600 days in a row is somebody who enjoys the game so you are going to be hearing the perspective of somebody who likes the game however not everything in this game is perfect and I do think there are ways uh, and areas that this game does need to improve despite how much I've played the game and how much I like the game so with all of that out of the way let's talk about our first category which is single player content so what exactly are you going to be doing in rise of kingdoms as a solo player well the primary thing that you're going to be doing for the early game and the mid game is going to be growing your account that is the main type of objective that you have so leveling up your city and all the different buildings inside of it researching new technology and getting more powerful troops things like that that is mostly going to be a single player experience there is some overlap with a lot of the different aspects of this game where um, if you're playing in an alliance which is the sort of multiplayer group function in this game um, things you know like I said they overlap so sometimes if you're in alliances things will go faster for you but in general the most of the early game is going to be developing your account leveling things up unlocking new abilities unlocking getting more powerful um, things along those lines now there is also a campaign mode it's called expedition this is a pretty lengthy uh, campaign so it starts at level one right here and it puts you into scenarios where you are fighting just pve content and so you have to build your armies in a way that is most optimal for defeating the uh, commanders and pve armies that you're going to be fighting so as you can see here there is uh, 80 separate levels plus a few offshoot missions that are more of rallying and attacking and defending cities rather than just open field fighting um, this is a very long campaign and only recently have I been able to complete the final mission um, I do still have a little bit of a work to do on this one I've just been too lazy to go back and revisit it but this is another aspect of a um, single player mode that has nothing to do with multiplayer that I think is pretty fun but it does sometimes get a little bit repetitive there is also Sunset Canyon now this is a game mode that is pretty much an auto battler I'm sure a lot of you guys are familiar with that but I can show you here you essentially 
essentially will set up your armies in a specific configuration and then other players can attack that configuration with their own even if you're offline this mode doesn't cause you to lose any troops or any progress so there's no risk to being involved in this game mode it's just an additional game mode that came up a couple of months into the game's development and it's a really welcome addition I do think that this game mode is awesome and there is some nice rewards that you get do get for participating in this uh, and again this is I would consider this single player content because the other player that you're fighting doesn't have to be online or interact with you at all now there is an event called the Golden Kingdom that comes around once in a while it's a brand new event that I have yet to fully experience although I have seen tons of content uh, live streams and things like that of players playing it where it seems to be um, sort of like a tiered different dungeon system where you progress through higher and higher tiers of a tower like dungeon and there's a battlefield that looks similar to sort of like a uh, fire emblem type of battle although it doesn't play in that exact way it's hard to describe the exact uh, type of gameplay that this feature is but it is a brand new again brand new game mode totally separate from everything else in the game and you know the more game modes that there are to play in my opinion the better for the game the more longevity and the more enjoyment that you would have there's also a uh, a, a an event called the Soroli uh, crisis now this is this could be considered a multiplayer event but uh, you do not need to uh, necessarily communicate with any players specifically in order to play it you can simply just go in and start playing this game mode and it's essentially like um, a raid battle in your typical MMO RPG although it is from a top-down perspective so it's not necessarily um, in a 3d scenario as something like um, World of Warcraft or something like that but you can pick your role tank dps or support and then you are summoned into a battlefield with a raid boss something that you could be that could you could consider a raid uh, a raid boss and this is a a game mode where again it is technically multiplayer but because there is a matchmaking feature you don't actually need to talk to the people that you're playing with you don't have to necessarily know them at all now you can you can play this with friends but in general you do not have to do that now there are also holiday events that are mostly single player where they will give you weekly events that you can do so we do have coming up tomorrow the dragon boat bonanza um so this is for the chinese dragon boat festival that is a technically a holiday in that country um, but there are you know halloween events and things like that christmas events new years all that good stuff and those for the most part are single player events which provide really great value for you there's also just straight up grinding right you can kill the pve content out on the map so there are barbarians there's also collecting resources and things like that and then finally there are weekly events that you can do um, some of them are multiplayer some of them are single player so for example this germany event will give you some certain rewards for completing certain objectives these are all mostly uh, single player as well so for this category i am going to give rise of kingdoms a four out of five because as you can see there is actually a ton that you can do in this game as a solo player now the only caveat is that being a member of an alliance uh, does enhance a lot of these events that are things that you could do solo but you may want to do with people that you you know have some sort of synergy with such as the Soroli event that I just described um, but in general there's a ton that you can do as a solo player without even needing to participate in the alliance or clan function um, the reason that it wasn't a perfect five out of five is because near the mid to late game a lot of these events do start to get old grinding out barbarians and you know some of the holiday events are sort of reskinned and reused over time um, and so it does uh, you know while they do provide value and they are fun at first after a while some of them do start to get a little bit boring but again there is such a wide variety of game modes in this game um, I think a lot of players would be surprised to find a lot of the smaller game modes that are nestled within rise of kingdoms as a whole and because of that i think it is worth the four out of five reading the next category we're going to be talking about is multiplayer content so this is very similar to the previous category except we're going to be talking about events that are pretty much exclusive to multiplayer content or are greatly enhanced by you being a member of an alliance or the game's clan type feature um, the primary uh, gameplay that comes along with being a member of an alliance 
is uh, the territory feature so on your map there will be um, instances where your alliance will want to um, take over territory that may be owned by other players or you know just generally helping with flag flag building and diplomacy um, in early games there's typically civil wars so you know some alliances versus other alliances and these types of events are very very fun but also costly in terms of your progress sometimes you know you will have troops that die which sets you back in terms of power and things like that now there is also the organic um, player interaction now I can't tell you how many friends I've actually made on this game which is not something that I can say for other multiplayer games when you think of something like a multiplayer game a lot of people think of like World of Warcraft or Call of Duty or League of Legends and a lot of those games while they are technically multiplayer um, they have a matchmaking system that just randomly puts you in a game with random players and usually you might only interact with them a little bit before the game is over and you move on to the next batch of randoms and in that type of environment I find that I don't typically make friends however in a game like this um, you do have a very interactive chat system there is incentive to having diplomacy amongst alliances and there is a lot of teamwork involved with building flags and taking over and beating enemies and for that reason um, you're much more likely in my opinion to make friends in a game like this than you are to make friends in other AAA titles which is a huge benefit I think the more player interaction that is in a game the better for its multiplayer experience and rise of kingdoms in my opinion does this very very well now there are other specific events that are multiplayer specific so one of the primary ones is called Ark of Osiris um, Ark of Osiris is a sort of a top-down almost like a MOBA it's not quite like a MOBA so don't take that for a literal um, you know a literal review of the game mode but in general um, it is and I wish I could actually show you guys here um, but it is in general a um, a game mode that is where two alliances port on either side of a map and you fight for control over the um, the objectives in the map and it kind of functions as a capture the flag so each alliance can earn points by killing members of the opposite alliance or by capturing objectives of the opposite alliance and you kind of race towards the middle of the map where you try to see who can capture the flag more uh, often and in this instance the flag is called the Ark of Osiris um, it's an Egyptian themed game mode and it happens in real time the event is a one hour long event and it's incredibly fun I'll try to show some uh, footage here over my video of uh, of Ark of Osiris and kind of an overview of that it's a very fun game that a uh, game mode in this game that comes around once every I believe two weeks and there's also a sort of um, esports event around this so the top 32 um, uh, alliances in the game do get to fight off uh, fight against each other in a bracket format and this comes around I believe once every year in maybe twice a year correct me if I'm wrong but I, I believe it's once a year there's different seasons and these matches get incredibly incredibly competitive um, so yeah there's a lot to love about that game mode there's also the kingdom versus kingdom game mode which is actually what I'm a part of right now and this map as you can see there's different colors here um, my alliance is in the orange my kingdom is in the orange and our enemies are actually up north here in purple this event is I believe a 45 day event um, which is very very fun very brutal and the goal of this event is to have your kingdom be the first to capture the center of the map called King's Land now I know this probably sounds similar to Ark of Osiris just based on how I'm describing it but as I can assure you um, Ark of Osiris is a very small map that you're capturing a center objective multiple times this is a massive massive map and this event again lasts over a month so this is the probably the pinnacle of events this is like the the grandest event in rise of kingdoms in my opinion people look forward to this event because it's very exciting very fun you get to just this is where you get to test to see how powerful you are as a player and how powerful you and your friends are as a kingdom this event is incredibly fun and i'm so happy that they did add this event now we talked about the event called uh Ciroli crisis here now again that's this can be considered a multiplayer game mode because you can actually play it with your friends so it's worth noting here as well now 
now there is also a game mode called ian's ballad which is more of a 45 minute to one hour event where you do port into an, a map that is more of an adventure style where you have to progress through the map there's different waves of enemies that you have to overcome and this is another multiplayer game mode that is relatively new provides you with decent uh, rewards and is very fun especially if you're able to jump into a, into a discord with some of your alliance members and kind of knock out that content it is a lot of fun as well now there is some grinding that you can do as an alliance um just like you can defeat barbarians as a solo player there are different things on the map called barbarian forts let me see if i can find one here's one right here defeating these forts is only possible when a member of an alliance so you will launch a rally against these objectives and then in order to defeat it your alliance members have to join your rally which is what you see happening here we also see silent killer it looks like he's a uh, someone's trying to attack his city um, but regardless uh this is another piece of content that you can kind of grind out now there is also it's worth noting in the home kingdom um things such as barbarian keeps and holds these also are um pieces of content on the map that you typically would do with your alliance and when you do these things you do get uh, rewarded with really nice rewards as well um, again that's something that you usually do with other players there's also an event called the Karak ceremony this uh, is a monthly event that comes around where you fight um, specific types of PvE content with uh, more and more power and they get very difficult and near the end typically you will have to attack them in rally fashion like i just showed you some of the holiday events in this game are also geared towards full alliance events rather than single player events um, there's other uh, game modes like the silk road where you and your alliance have to fight off incoming in, uh, intruders that are trying to capture this supplies that travel across the map so as you can see just like in the single player aspect there is a ridiculous amount of content for multiplayer uh, play and because of that i think that rise of kingdoms deserves a 4.75 out of 5 just again the amount of content in this game in the from a multiplayer perspective is absolutely insane like there is so much to do it's incredible now the reason that it wasn't a perfect five is because some of these events can get repetitive right like sometimes doing silk road um, the 10th time you've done it it gets a little bit repetitive and also some events like kvk you know one could argue that it's too time intensive it requires too much time investment because some people do play kvk for 8 10 12 hours in a day um it is you know it is that fun so some people might think that this is too time intensive and because of that i do think that it doesn't deserve a perfect five but in reality the multiplayer events and interactions are where this game shines and if you do participate in an alliance i'm sure you will walk away with a couple of friends and you may even continue to talk to them outside of the game which is the case for me all right with that out of the way let's talk about the enjoyability and replayability of rise of kingdoms so as we just talked about there is a, a ton of content that you know you're likely to find some niche in this game that you thoroughly enjoy some players love kingdom versus kingdom some players love Ark of osiris for the capture the flag type of gameplay other people like the auto battling feature of sunset canyon and lost canyon um, these auto battler uh, features are things that players do tend to love and so since there's so much content in this game um, i'm sure there is a piece of content that you're going to like if what you like is military strategy real-time strategy games um that i think is where this game shines as well um also when you're heavily invested in the progress of your of your gameplay so when you really want to upgrade your city and you really want to improve your troops and things like that um you do want to come back every single day to maximize the rewards there are daily rewards that you can do and these rewards come in the form of premium currency and the possibility of summoning some of the strongest commanders in the game as far as enjoyability i think that the graphical style of this game is really awesome i think it's pretty unique uh, a lot of the other military uh, vertical style mobile games have a more realistic uh, art style to them whereas it looks like rise of kingdoms takes a more cartoony approach you can even take a look at some of the 3d models of the commanders they are fully animated and i think the graphics 
graphical style is just really 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 great um again the commanders are 3d renders and you know they are animated they are a bit exaggerated in their proportions which again leads to a more cartoony animated style which i think looks amazing but also uh ages really well you know some of the other games in this genre that came out maybe a couple of years ago look like they you know should be on a playstation 2 um and they just don't feel like they're modern even though they run on an iphone 11 pro max so with that being said i think that the game really does look beautiful it's colorful and very enjoyable um the music in this game is very high quality um the sound effects and the ambiance it are incredible the game ha has a day and night cycle so you'll see it cycle between daytime nighttime sometimes it's raining and the rain sound effects are amazing if you zoom in on uh different ponds and rivers in the game you'll actually be able to hear the river running and i just think that from an audio perspective all the different sound effects and ambiance in the game are spot on all of the music is composed exclusively for this game and the music is incredible as well so from that perspective um just given how likely you are to come back and play the daily quests how enjoyable the game is to look at and to listen to and all the content that there is to enjoy i give rise of kingdoms a perfect five out of five in terms of enjoyability and the likelihood that you are to come back and continue playing the next category is dev support so this category is all about how often is the game updated how often are they fixing bugs how often are they adding new game modes now i will say they are constantly updating the game it seems like there is a brand new update every two weeks or so um it's just it's crazy how many updates that they're releasing they're constantly um tweaking things fixing bugs things like that um they are often releasing new content at a rate that i believe is much faster than other mobile games um i think that other mobile games you know maybe have a core gameplay that they tend not to stray from too much but as we've already talked about in this video there are so many different types of game modes and so many different types of events and it seems like every single year they're adding another major game mode to this game and as it stands you know being embedded in a grander scheme of rise of kingdoms as a whole um, i do think that the level of commitment that the team has to including new game modes is uh, really it's fantastic honestly it's really really good now i will say that there do seem to be uh, more bugs uh than i'd like now that's not to say that this game is riddled with bugs i think overall the game actually does um run really well and there aren't that many bugs uh, but i think the fact that i do play this game so much and i do actually make content for this game uh that i since i'm going through the game with a fine tooth comb if you will uh i do seem to stumble upon some bugs that i find are a little bit frustrating um but usually they're patched pretty quick i think the biggest or and most frustrating bug for the game was the chat system and it took probably about a year uh, unfortunately for for the devs to figure out how to fix the chat system um it kept crashing and you know there were a lot of issues with it now i am happy to announce that the chat system is from my experience fully functional at the at the time of recording this um and prior to this it was pretty functional um but there were definitely instances where it would fall short and there are some smaller issues whenever they implement new uh, mechanics for commander abilities sometimes new commanders have uh, some bugs built into their new abilities which is to be expected from a a mobile game that you know really can only do so much testing before they have to release it to the world and once they do then the bugs typically get found by the public and reported pretty effectively to the dev team and usually they are able to patch those pretty quick now one very obvious thing that i should talk about is servers that i do think need work but we're going to talk about this a little bit more in the next section when we cover game performance um, but it is worth noting that the servers need some improvement and that does fall on the dev team and also I, it is worth noting that they are relatively slow to release some features that players have been asking for um, this community the rise of kingdoms community is very vocal on their official facebook on their uh, official discord on youtube videos in in content creators and their videos um, the player base is incredibly passionate and vocal about what they want and and sometimes rise of kingdoms is slow to deliver these things we're talking about you know players have been asking for more epic commanders for a very long time we've been asking for more civilizations a greater variety of civilizations for a very long time it's been over a year since the last three civilizations were added at the time of recording
supporting this and you know we don't actually know it's it sounds like they are working on adding more of these things but again we've been asking it for it for a very long time and you know we did see one new epic commander come into the game um but it wasn't somebody that was very exciting to a lot of us and the way that you obtain her isn't very straightforward and you know just little things like that where you know players are very vocal on what they want and lilith is kind of slow to deliver um but regardless of that just this sheer content uh the sheer amount of content that is that is put out by the dev team the sheer number of updates that we do get from the dev team i think that this game deserves a 4.5 out of 5. now i know like I, it may have sounded like i was very pessimistic in that last part of this section but i do want to emphasize again there are updates every week or every other week and there are major game updates that include brand new game modes usually at once every six to 12 months which again i, I personally think that that is much uh, much faster than other games of this uh, caliber um, it may even be sooner than that it may even be uh, like every four months or something like that we see a brand new game mode we just saw the golden kingdom uh, but prior to that we saw Ian's ballad very very uh, recently before that so we are seeing tons of game modes very fast uh, back to back and I think that the content the stream of content is amazing um there are just some areas where it falls short like them not adding some features that we do actually want and it's also worth noting that some of the bugs are things that most players will never notice they're very minor tweaks to small talents often corners of talent builds things like that um so while it's something that i notice as a player i think realistically a lot of people wouldn't notice a lot of the tiny bugs that are in the game next we're going to talk about game performance so this is going to be all about lag crashes the servers etc um this game in from what i've seen runs very well on devices released within the last two years so we're talking iphone 10 and newer we're talking about ipads that came out within the last year or two ipad pros um this game runs very very well i play the game on an iphone 11 pro and i usually have very few issues with the game on this device there's a lot of debate on whether the game runs better on android or iphone it seems from the people that i've talked to that iphone has fewer crashes whereas android has fewer bugs but that's just a very vague overview of what i've seen um but in general if you have a newer phone or a newer tablet this game should run perfectly fine now that being said if you have a phone older than two years you may have it you may see some struggle right it may struggle to play this game and i know that that doesn't seem right because the game again is very graphically cartoony and things like that but the battle formulas and the amount of stuff that can happen on the screen screen at any given time is very very uh, intensive and because of that you know they have tried to um, implement some different settings here for um, graphic quality and different frame rates and things like that um, there are things that you can turn off like screen flicker and and whatnot um, but in general you know these types of um these settings i think they have some effect um, they also have a simplified graphics feature so if the game detects that there's a ton of things going on in the screen at one given time it will simplify the graphics so that way the game and your device handles it better but even still um, i think that older devices will struggle when playing this game um, even on a brand new iphone 11 pro during certain events this game will cause your phone to get hot right it will be warm because your phone will be working very hard to process the amount of things that are happening on the screen at any given time during big fights big battles obviously right now there's nothing happening on my screen so this is very fine this is normal um the, the, my computer doesn't have to work very hard for this but again there are large fights where you know you will see some lag and older phones will struggle now computer emulators in my opinion and from the opinion of my alliance members seem to be the best way to go um, I know a lot of other content creators prefer things like iPad pros and stuff like that from what I've seen uh, computer emulators are a bit better there are tons of Android emulators out on the market all of which are free I personally use blue stacks and I found tons of success with it especially in kvk um, I will have a link down in the description below where you can download rise of kingdoms for blue stacks absolutely for free so if you guys do play this game on your phone i would highly recommend trying it out on pc if you're struggling with uh lag and you know simplified graphics and things like that it's also worth noting that on my phone and from what i've heard from others the game tends to take up about two gigabytes of space so that's not too bad um considering 
the the amount of storage that most phones have these days but again if you're using an older phone with 32 gigs of storage you know two gigabytes may be a lot for you depending on how many pictures and videos you have on your device so that is worth noting as well now finally i want to talk about servers now this is something that a lot of people have complained about for a very long time and i don't want to sugarcoat this too much but but you know <laughs> kvk servers need to be fixed um kvk is the kingdom versus kingdom event that we talked about before that is what you see up in this corner this lost kingdom and that is the the current server that i am on the current map that i am on uh this game mode and this event is very ambitious from lilith it was a huge update for them however we are past season four now and massive massive lag spikes still happen to this day during this event at key moments so when passes open when significant things are happening so many players are playing at the exact same time that these servers cannot handle it and unfortunately it does tend to make the game unplayable in certain aspects of this event where it matters most right it matters most that the game play flawlessly so unfortunately um there is some server optimization that needs to happen this is something that i'm sure lilith is aware of i don't know how hard they're working on fixing this i would like to think that they are working hard to fix this but again the server lag has been something that we've experienced for over a year at this point it seems um and even during your home kingdom there will be instances where you know you're doing guardians and that's a pve experience and you're doing the guardians and there's so many armies on the map you it's the game starts to lag and the servers for me are definitely the biggest issue when it comes to game performance um this should not be a surprise to lilith i'm sure lilith knows about this i don't know what's causing them to take so long to fix this problem whether you know i'm sure it's a highly complex problem i don't know if they don't want to spend more money on the servers um they certainly can afford it that is absolutely not an excuse they definitely can afford better servers than what, what they have now it's just a matter of you know is that going to solve the problem or do they further need to optimize the coding of the game and the way that the game is displaying uh, different armies and the way that this the game is calculating um the damage formulas and things like that um you know this is a problem that even world of warcraft has as a what you would consider a triple a uh, mmorpg that's been around forever even world of warcraft still has lag spikes lag issues server issues things like that so this is not uncommon for mmo games like this with massive complicated damage formulas because the servers do have to run tons of numbers at the same time however again even when you're playing on a brand new ipad or you're emulating it on a two thousand dollar pc the lag can be unplayable at times and the servers do need to be optimized fixed whatever they have to do it's something has to be done and it's taken a very long time for them to address this because of that um i am going to give this game a 3.5 out of 5. i think again there is there is areas where the game needs work um however if you have a phone in the last two years you will have no issues with the game for i would say 90 percent of your playtime. right a large portion of your gameplay will not be affected by lag or glitches visual graphical bugs things like that so if your phone or tablet is pretty new you shouldn't have too many issues but again the server issues are unavoidable and sometimes make the game unplayable and for that it gets a 3.5 out of 5. now the final category is the monetization strategy of rise of kingdoms so this is how in your face they are with microtransactions as well as how big of an of, inve of an advantage you get um from spending money in the game so the first thing that I will say is that um, I have paid money to play this game, of course, uh, but as somebody who is very, very aware of how this game works, free to play players have a vital role in the success of your alliance, especially in large events like KVK. Um, there is so much that a free to play player can do to help the, uh, their alliance that the gameplay experience for free to play should still be very enjoyable i was free to play for a while this game has the rally and defense garrison functions which allow free to play players to benefit from the progress of their quote unquote pay to win alliance mates so what that means is that as long as a free to play player joins a rally that is led by a pay to win player the free to play player gets kind of the benefits of the pay to win players uh progress in terms of their commander power their troop type uh, troop power things like that um and so 
I do think that the game is very much playable by a free to play player. There are tons of events. Like I said, at the beginning of this video, we talked about all the different events that are uh, solo events, multiplayer events, things like that. So if you are a free to play player, um, I would highly recommend that you join a, an active, powerful alliance. And if you do that, be very active in the game. And if you are, I think you can progress relatively um, smoothly through the process of leveling up your city, your buildings, your research and technology things like that I think again with the number of events there are tons of different ways that even free-to-play players can obtain the premium currency up in the top right corner they're called gems you can farm these gems on the map whenever you want you get them just by killing some barbarians as well you can see that right here so there are ways that free-to-play players can get thousands uh, very very easily you can get thousands of premium currency um, however there's still a decent advantage to spending money for this currency because you do get Get a lot of this currency for making certain purchases so for example five dollars gives you 1,000 gems so killing a barbarian that drops 30 gems you would have to kill lots of barbarians in order to just compete with five dollars worth of purchases with that being said i do think that there is something to be said about a game that caters to a small spender as well and this game does that very well there are tons of different bundles and special events that don't cost a lot of money that will give you a nice advantage in the game and you can get away with not spending very much and still getting a lot of benefit out of that premium currency and some of the speed ups that you do get um, the game does release constant content like we talked about before and a lot of times with the holiday bundles and things like that there's always a new thing to purchase and a lot of these bundles are very enticing but they can get pretty expensive pretty quickly the bundles do come in five dollar ten dollar twenty dollar fifty dollar and one hundred dollar bundles um i've never seen a bundle cost more than a hundred dollars although i do believe that there might be one or two that are very unique and specific to leveling up your city correct me if i'm wrong um but for the most part 99 percent of the bundles are going to be a hundred dollars or less but again they do get pretty expensive pretty fast now there is also a battle pass feature this feature was added in to the trading post it's called lucerne scrolls currently we're on we're on uh season four or volume four of the lucerne scrolls this has 80 different levels and it lasts a total of eight weeks um from start to finish each week you get new challenges to complete now it's worth noting that there is a free to play portion of this battle pass um and so you will be able to get lots of rewards just as a free to play player however these rewards do not compare to the the rewards that you do get from uh, spending in the battle pass the battle pass comes in five dollar and twenty dollar increments the twenty dollar bundle for the battle pass will give you bonus levels just like any other battle pass from any other uh, game that you've seen with a battle pass feature in my opinion i don't think that the value is very high for the battle pass i think that that's an area where the game does need some work i think that it feels to me that they've added a battle pass out of obligation because lots of other games are doing that um, it is nice that free-to-play players get more things for free which is great again i'm not complaining about that however i do think if you're spending 20 dollars for a battle pass i think that the rewards that they're giving you don't necessarily equate to that uh, value unfortunately so i'm not a huge fan of the battle pass in this game um, but it is a feature that again it does slightly benefit free to play as well so it is welcome i just wish that they would add a little bit more for what you're spending now there are two commanders that are completely locked behind a paywall one of them is minamoto um, this is a commander that is pretty heavily advertised when you first download the game um, this commander is pretty expensive to get completely perfect um, and he is again exclusive to spending so you cannot get him as a free to play the other uh, example of this is a commander called Hannibal Barca this is another commander commander that you can only get by spending money now this does sound pretty bad but um, just realize that there are probably about 50 um, or 45 commanders in the game at the time of recording this um, so 43 of which you can actually get as technically you could get as a free to play player obviously if you are a spender it will be easier to get some of the more powerful um legendary commanders but you know there are only two that are locked behind paywalls and the good news is that those commanders are not the most powerful in the game it can be argued that they are actually on the weaker side of the legendary tier so again the good news is that the ones locked behind the um paywall are not the best in the game um so that is something to note as well but 
they are locked behind a paywall so that is something to to uh touch on briefly another thing worth noting is the number of pop-ups that you see in in game i think this is a very intrusive form of marketing um luckily there are not that many instances where rise of kingdoms will flash a pop-up on the screen encouraging you to spend money um sometimes when you reach certain milestones you will see a timed bundle show up on your screen a lot of times these bundles are very valuable in terms of what you get for how much you spend however in general um, there are very few times that you will get those types of pop-ups compared to other games in this genre or even other mobile games in general um, I cannot tell you the number of mobile war strategy games that I've played where as soon as you download the game they show you the daily bundle or they show you the latest holiday thing front and center you should buy it you should spend money on it and luckily rise of kingdoms does not do that at the time of recording this they could always change that of course there are other games that have 45 different flashing jumping um uh icons on the screen as you can see here besides the menu we do only have two icons up here um one of which is the shop and this is the shop here um it's not super animated or super flashy there's just you know things that you can buy if you want some of them are timed some of them you know a couple day timer some of them are a uh, few hour timer so that is worth noting this is also a 39 this is part of the kingdom versus kingdom um so it's worth noting that the game is not too flashy when it comes to uh, directing you towards the shop now in the early games it will encourage you to um, maybe spend your first couple of dollars to get Minamoto things like that so they are not without fault in this area but I do think that rise of kingdoms is less intrusive than many other mobile games which is a huge plus for me and finally in a 1v1 scenario I do think that uh, players who spend money in the game certainly have an advantage over players who do not but again I, it is worth noting that a vast majority of the gameplay is teamwork based so alliance versus alliance or kingdoms versus kingdoms and in those scenarios the lines are a bit more blurred on who's spending how much money um, but again technically speaking if you were to take one player versus another player the player who spends more money is more likely to win now that is not a guarantee I've seen plenty of players who spend a lot of money and who absolutely have no knowledge of the game and they are completely trash uh, which is hilarious to see but um in general you de will you will definitely have um, a an advantage over the the free-to-play player but again a I would say 90% of the way that you should be playing this game is with your alliance and with your kingdom. And if you're playing in that fashion, um, you will benefit from your alliance members who have spent more money than you. And because of that, um, I think that again, there's still tons of room for free to play. Free to play make a great comp uh, contribution to the game. And that's good news because a vast majority of players are free to play. All that I've said for this category lands Rise of Kingdoms at a 3.5 out of 5. Again, there are lots of bundles that come very frequently they're very enticing but they are pretty expensive they get expensive very very quickly there are instances where the game does encourage you to spend money however I don't think there are as many as other mobile games and because of that I'm giving rise of kingdoms a 3.5 out of 5 for their monetization strategy um, it's good but I think it could be better so the way that I calculate the overall score for rise of kingdoms is I'm adding up all of the points from each individual category and then dividing it by six because there were six categories so in total rise of kingdoms uh, has a total points of 25.25 out of 30 possible points which lands them at about a 4.2 out of 5 that is my official rating for rise of kingdoms now it's worth noting if we jump into the google play store rise of kingdoms does have a 4.3 stars out of five and that is uh, with 1 million reviews and 10 million plus downloads so i think that my review is i, I would hope is pretty accurate um, my 4.2 rating comes in very close to the 4.3 rating of 1 million players so i think that that is something worth noting now it's also worth mentioning that uh for as long as i've played this game i have not seen a pop-up suggesting that i give the game a five-star review in exchange for premium currency i know that there are some games that do have incentives like this where they will give you some sort of reward for giving a five-star review I have not seen that pop up so far so as far as I know those five the 4.3 stars out of five on the Google Play Store is 
probably pretty accurate now i know that, that i'm sure there are ways to influence that artificially but again there's no in-game way that i know of where you would get rewarded for giving the game a five stars which should uh add to the credibility of that 4.3 out of five now i know this is a long video so if you made it all the way to the end i really do appreciate it and i would love if you could just drop a thumbs up and comment down below any questions that you have about rise of kingdoms now as i mentioned before there is a link down below to download rise of kingdoms for your computer and like I said to me that is the best way to play if you have an older phone or if there's very major events happening I think that usually computers are better at handling the game than some uh, than some phones might be and so click that link below to download the game totally for free it's on blue stocks and it's an easy way for you to help my channel without it costing you anything now it's also worth noting that I have a ton of guides for rise of kingdoms on my channel so if you are about to jump in as a brand new player look no further i have a ton of videos that will definitely help you out as a brand new player to rise of kingdoms if you're new around here make sure you click the subscription button and click the bell button so that way you are notified the next time that i upload any rise of kingdoms content as always my social media links are in the description below as well as my discord and my twitch channel where i do tend to stream rise of kingdoms at least once a week with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been omniarch and i will talk to you guys again soon peace